Got some breaking news overnight on Iran yet again. That country said to be on the move yet again. State TV saying that two of its warships are on their way to the Atlantic on their Navy's first ever mission there. I want to bring John Bolton in now. Former ambassador to the United Nations and a Fox News contributor in L.A. today, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, good morning to you out there in California. Good morning, Bill. I want to show our viewers quickly on the map what we believe to be Iran is up to now. Uh, off the southwestern coast here of Iran, Navy's fifth fleet, by the way, just across the Persian Gulf in the Strait of Hormuz, that choke point uh, that's been talked about for so long, uh, such a source of contention now between the oil route uh, between Iran, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia. The idea here is to go back through the Suez Canal, out into the Mediterranean, advance at one time here. But that's not really new, because several months ago, Iran parked a... Uh, uh, warships off the coast of Syria, but now what it wants to do is take these ships out through the Mediterranean into the Atlantic Ocean. And Mr. Ambassador, why are they doing this now? They must feel really good with all this attention. Well, they certainly do, and they have reason to feel good as the uh, November agreement from Geneva on the Iranian nuclear program uh, takes effect. Uh, that agreement represents a significant victory for Iran. They made temporary, easily reversible uh, concessions on their nuclear program. They've broken through the Western regime of international sanctions. And the sending of these two warships is a political signal to the United States, to the other countries in the region, uh, that Iran feels good and is trying to project power. And I, I think this is something that, uh, uh, that, that we should take very careful note of. They do not feel uh, constrained by us or, or now by the international so sanctions. So it's, uh, it's your sense that we're actually giving, giving them a platform. That's enabled them to feel yeah, this, this way. Remember in 2012, they said they want to put ships off the eastern coast of the United States. Yeah, that what, what, the, what the Iranian military is trying to do is send a political signal that they are not confined to the Persian Gulf, that they can roam at large, as you pointed out, with the earlier missions through the Suez Canal into the eastern Mediterranean and now more broadly. Now think ahead just a few years as Iran's ballistic missile capabilities develop as it makes further progress on its nuclear program, mating nuclear warheads onto those ballistic missiles, put on ships into the Atlantic close to the United States. They're showing that they can threaten us, threaten our allies around the world, really on a global basis. In, in, in fact, not just in the Middle East, but worldwide. Uh, there's another issue regarding Syria, too, that involves Iran. I mean, you pick up a newspaper today, it's unbelievable. I mean, Iran is, is in the mix in all these major international stories today. So the story here is that the U.S. did not want the Iranians to be at this peace negotiation table regarding the war in Syria. And now the Iranians have been disinvited. What do you see on there? Well, uh, on the surface, this is a horrible mistake by the United Nations and U.N. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who invited the Iranians purportedly against America's wishes. I'll say this. I don't think we know the whole story yet. I don't think Ban Ki-moon, whom I've known for over 20 years, one of the world's most cautious diplomats, would have extended an invitation to Iran unless he thought he had American approval. Mm. So while the U.N. has clearly made a mistake, I, I think the U.S. is in the mix here, too. Secretary of State Kerry said a few weeks ago, you know, maybe Iran could participate in this next round of Syria talks. I think it's an indication uh, that the administration is tilted very heavily toward Iran. I think that's a huge mistake uh, from the U.S. perspective. I think the Iranian negotiators have taken us to the cleaners repeatedly. Uh, and so I think while the surface mistake here is the U.N.'s, I think the U.S. is implicated in this mistake. Well, well now back up just a little bit here. If we're to believe that, then something had to happen or change within the relationship. Relationship. You're saying originally the U.S. government wanted Iran to be a party to this, and then in the past 24 hours we said, forget it, we don't want you there. What changed? Well, I, I, th I think the explanation is clear that the Syrian opposition said, we're not going to uh, any peace negotiation where the Iranians are involved. The Saudis probably said the same thing. Now today you have the Russians attacking the U.N. for withdrawing the invitation. This is a mess. And, and one of the reasons it's a mess is that the United States, under uh, President Obama and Secretary Kerry, have misjudged the situation in Syria for three years. They have said repeatedly, Secretary of State Clinton did as well, that we had a common interest with Russia in stability in Syria. That has always been wrong. Russia's interest is keeping Assad in power, uh, and they've been very successful at it. So, right. so this through is all a, of this, a, a, through, a, through all of this, Iran feels emboldened. Um, I mean, they really have, I'll get to the last word on here, but they really have 
uh, a different sense of themselves uh, through all this. They have pushed their way onto the world stage, and they have that platform now. Iran's power is growing in the region and worldwide. America's is declining. Mm. Ambassador Bolton, thank you. From Los Angeles today, where it's early. Appreciate the time. John Bolton, thanks. Thank you, Bill. Martha.